I honestly don't even know how to begin this SmackDown review because I have so much genuine emotion running through me right now. I know I'm going to forget to cover something or I know I'm going to forget to say something that I originally wanted to say before I hit record. But Daniel Bryan, you guys know from watching me all these years, you, you guys know how I have proclaimed Daniel Bryan to be the one true successor to John Cena in the WWE and his retirement was a very heartbreaking moment, not only for me, but for the WWE. If you need any more of a reason as to why I say that, then you watch SmackDown Live tonight. You know, we all poke fun at Roman Reigns, and we all criticize Roman Reigns and the WWE's political agenda when it comes to Roman Reigns, but... It's very, it's very difficult for me not to believe that WWE intentionally kept Daniel Bryan out because they knew that Roman Reigns would never have an opportunity to be the number one man in this company with Daniel Bryan there. It, it might sound hokey and it might sound a little conspiracy theory, you know, but I, I, I truly believe that WWE downplayed Daniel Bryan's issues so much. And I, I genuinely feel that WWE kept him on the sideline because of what Daniel Bryan did on his own to become the true face of the company while WWE had no intentions of making him the face of the company. That opinion might be looked down upon. That opinion, I'm sure, is going to receive a lot of criticism. But it's not the first time that I, that I stated that. And I believe it just as much as I do now than I did then. Every time I hear Daniel Bryan's retirement speech, especially tonight, and I'm not afraid to admit it. I'm not afraid to admit it whatsoever. I cried when he retired, quote unquote, and I shed a few tears tonight rewatching that. And I shed a few tears tonight watching Daniel Bryan talk about how special this moment was as he thanked his wife. I did. I'm not afraid to admit that. We love professional wrestling. You're here because you love professional wrestling. We all love professional wrestling. There are moments like this that call for a few tears to be shed. We welcome these people into our lives on a weekly basis. They are basically an extended family to each and every one of us. So for us to cry when something like this happens is not or should not be looked down upon at all. We're all grown men and women. And Daniel Bryan was a very important piece to not only me, but to your lives as well. WrestleMania 30 is one of the greatest moments I have ever seen from a professional wrestling aspect. It was one of the best moments of all time. When you talk about top WrestleMania moments, that's going to be at the very top or near the very top of the list. I am genuinely shocked that WWE cleared Daniel Bryan this afternoon. I, I am. I, I, I didn't think it was going to happen. I didn't want to look too much into it because there were rumors and rumors and rumors and rumors and variations of rumors. Always something breaking. It's always a question asked. Meltzer getting questions. Satin getting questions. This guy, that guy getting questions. People asking me as if I'm some WWE insider. I don't know. I don't know if Daniel Bryan was coming to me and I owned the WWE, I'd clear him. Boom. He got cleared by everybody. Get back in the ring. WWE did not want to clear him for whatever reason. They did not want to clear him. This is why I tread lightly when I talk about that conspiracy theory that I have. It's not that far-fetched to think about. 
But WWE clearing Daniel Bryan this afternoon. They didn't clear Daniel Bryan this afternoon on a whim. It wasn't one of those things where Vince McMahon woke up and Dr. Joseph Maroon woke up and said, yeah, you know what, we're going we're gonna to clear Daniel Bryan today. Now, it wasn't one of those situations at all. This is something that WWE kept secret from everybody, including Daniel Bryan. They knew what they wanted to do. They knew what they wanted to do. This is something that has been planned, has been in WWE's plans, and all we need to know now is when he's officially going to make his in-ring return. Now, I stated, I stated on Off the Script this weekend when we talked about the rumors of Daniel Bryan getting a hyperbaric chamber test done to enhance him getting cleared for WWE television. He took every measure possible to get cleared for the WWE and his in-ring return. I mentioned on Off the Script that with the way WrestleMania is shaping up, and we can, we can poke fun at all the multi-man matches that we want. They added another one tonight with the United States Championship. It's Mahal versus Orton versus Bobby Roode. Uh, I'm assuming we're going to get a triple threat match for the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championships. We got the tag team match with Ronda Rousey. You know, we got a lot of multi-man matches coming up for WrestleMania. Battle Royal here, Battle Royal there. It, it, it's... And I and I lost my train of thought because I'm just so I'm just so excited about about what's going on right now. But I talked about not wanting Daniel Bryan to be on WrestleMania's card because something of this magnitude is so big. I feel like it's going to get drowned out at WrestleMania because you got so much other shit going on. You got Lesnar and Reigns. You got The Undertaker and John Cena. Ronda Rousey there. Charlotte versus Asuka. You, you got so many things going on. Adding that to what's already shaping up to be a great WrestleMania card, I feel like it might get overshadowed. And I admit that I didn't want it to happen. And it's okay for me to come on here and state that on Tuesday night, I don't think that's going to happen at all after what we've seen tonight with Daniel Bryan. I don't think it's going to get overshadowed. I don't think it's going to be one of those things that's going to be on television and we're going to forget it because something bigger is going to happen. No. No. This is the biggest moment of the year for WWE. The biggest moment of the year. I don't... You could even say you could put Daniel Bryan in the main event of WrestleMania. You could make... Whatever you're planning to do with Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania, because he needs to be at WrestleMania. I don't give a fuck who you are or where your position is in WWE. If you do not book this man at WrestleMania, you are making a critical mistake. This man needs to be at WrestleMania in a wrestling role. And I think we're going to get that after what we've seen tonight. I don't think we have too much to worry about. You could even put Daniel Bryan in the main event of whatever he's planned to do at WrestleMania, that man could be at this very stage in the main event of WrestleMania. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon could easily be the main event of WrestleMania. Just based on what we've seen with Daniel Bryan, how big his return is, and the reaction that he got tonight. And I am not afraid to admit that. I don't give a shit if you hate Daniel Bryan. I don't give a shit if you love Daniel Bryan. The true successor to John Cena is Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan returning goes to show you how stupid WWE is for putting all their eggs in one basket named Roman Reigns. It goes to show you that all the work that they did with Roman Reigns will never even amount to one-tenth of what Daniel Bryan could do as the face of the WWE. And I wholeheartedly believe, I believe it now, I believed it then when he won the WWE Championship. There has been nobody in this company 
worthy of being a successor to John Cena outside of Daniel Bryan. You guys don't know how valuable Daniel Bryan is. Not only to SmackDown, but the WWE as a whole. Daniel Bryan single-handedly tonight, I was already slightly excited about WrestleMania. Because I'm looking at the card, and I'm, I'm at the gym today, and I'm, and I'm looking at the card as I'm on the treadmill, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, WrestleMania doesn't look half that bad, half bad this year. It don't look that bad. It looks great on paper. Now, all we need for WWE to do is translate how great it looks on paper and give us and deliver us a main event that is worthy of being a main event and a WrestleMania card that I could finally say after the conclusion of a seven-hour show that this was one of the greatest WrestleManias of all time. It certainly has the potential to be. With Daniel Bryan coming back, WrestleMania went from, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked about WrestleMania, to you cannot miss WrestleMania now. WrestleMania is a can't-miss show. With Daniel Bryan coming back and being on WrestleMania's card, wrestling, cleared for in-ring return, it, it is a can't-miss show. It is the biggest moment of the year. It is the biggest story coming out, going in and coming out of WrestleMania, bar none. I don't give a fuck. What happens on that show? I don't give a shit. Jesus Christ could come down for the second coming and present himself in front of New Orleans. Daniel Bryan's return is going to be bigger than anything that happens on that show. Daniel Bryan single-handedly has taken my interest in WrestleMania from, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it, to I can't fucking wait till WrestleMania. Daniel Bryan's inclusion in WrestleMania has raised my interest level in WrestleMania so much that for the first time in years, I can honestly say I'm looking forward to WrestleMania. And I have hated WrestleMania. I have shit on WrestleMania. I have soured on WrestleMania year after year after year because the, the meaning of WrestleMania to me has gone so far the opposite way that all WWE cares about for a seven-hour show is giving me one or two WrestleMania moments and calling it a day. With Daniel Bryan on the card this year, it's a can't-miss WrestleMania show. You guys don't know how valuable Daniel Bryan coming back to the WWE is. I want you guys to pay attention to what happened in the conclusion of SmackDown Live tonight, which was a very, very good show. You know... We can all sit here, and, and, and I, I, I was doing it, you know, we're all guilty of, of jumping the gun here. I, I want you guys to come back down to planet Earth for a second, please. Let's all take this week by week. Yes, we could talk about the dream matches that we want to see with Daniel Bryan now being back, cleared to compete in the WWE. The likelihood of them happening is greater now than ever. Yes, I understand everybody, including me, wants to see matches against... Shinsuke Nakamura, AJ Styles, you know, we, we want to see, you know, Daniel Bryan versus a possible Aleister Black, Daniel Bryan versus fucking Johnny Gargano, you know, I, I want to see it, believe me, I want to see it just as much as you guys do, can you imagine the collective wrestling hard-ons for a match with Daniel Bryan and Johnny Gargano, can you fathom what type of fucking emotion would go into a match like that. Jesus Christ. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn have done a great job in their roles. Sami Zayn, I was very doubtful that he would take on this heel persona and thrive in it. He's proven everybody wrong. I, I love Sami Zayn to death. You guys know how much of a Sami Zayn mark I am. He's proven everybody wrong with this fucking gimmick. He is great at what he does. Being next to Kevin Owens makes Sami Zayn that much better of a heel. That goes to show you how good Kevin Owens is as a heel. But with what they did to Shane McMahon last, uh, last week and with what they did to Daniel Bryan tonight, two things I want you guys to pay attention to, okay? Number one, they attacked Daniel Bryan. Do you see the amount of volcanic heat that Daniel Bryan gave 
pretty much gifted Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Daniel Bryan being on SmackDown Live back as a in-ring competitor is going to enhance every other heel he is in the ring with because that's how good Daniel Bryan is as a babyface. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn were, I would say, if I was to gauge on a scale of 1 to 10, the amount of heat that Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens got was about a 6. With their attack on Daniel Bryan tonight, it went to an 11. That's how good Daniel Bryan is going to make every single heel he is in the ring with. Did you see the intensity of Daniel Bryan throwing those yes kicks? Did you see the intensity the intensity of Daniel Bryan throwing those missile drop kicks in the corner simultaneously to both Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens? The man is truly fucking elated. The man is truly fucking in heaven that he is back now. And I couldn't be happier for him. Another thing I want you guys to pay attention to is I honestly did not think that they were going to go full-on attack. I thought maybe a punch or two or a kick. That They went full-on beat the shit out of Daniel Bryan tonight. And, you know, Daniel Bryan is Daniel Bryan. They, they left everybody with, with, oh my God, I don't believe they beat the shit out of Daniel Bryan. He just came back, right? People are going to play into that fact and that aspect. But I want you guys to look a little bit deeper into what the real meaning of Daniel Bryan and getting such a beating meant tonight. Daniel Bryan took fucking an ass kicking by Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. A a, a brutal halluva kick, an apron power bomb by Kevin Owens. The fact that they booked him and scripted him to take that big of a beating tonight only means great things moving forward. Daniel Bryan is fucking back. In the WWE. And I honestly was going to shit all over this storyline if I didn't see a proper conclusion. Daniel Bryan being back now and able to fucking go has just enhanced this storyline from, wow, this is really interesting. And then it had some dead moments and we just gone ice cold. We didn't know where WWE was going to go with this. We thought they were going to give us Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens and just leave out Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon. Now that Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon are going to be both on the same page against Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, this feud has a proper conclusion. And I could not be more excited and I could not be more happy. I was going to I was gonna give up on this storyline because the only thing that made sense was a, a Daniel Bryan return. That was the only payoff that we ever wanted with this feud. And we're going to get it. We are lucky enough. We are alive during an absolutely memorable moment in WWE history. The fact that this guy has been retired for two years. The fact that this guy had to give up his dream winning the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania 30. The fact that Daniel Bryan won the World Heavyweight Championship in one of the greatest WrestleMania moments of all time. The fact that the guy got married. The guy got fucking married, came back from his honeymoon to find out that his father passed away, and then he had to fucking retire. The fact that that man lived through all of that and suffered so much loss and the fact that he's now coming back, how could you ever go against Daniel Bryan? How could you ever root against Daniel Bryan? I don't give a fuck who you are. I don't give a shit who you're a super fan of. The true face of the WWE is back. The true successor to John Cena is back. Get used to it. Get used to it. I don't want to jump the gun like everybody else because I'm excited just like everybody else is, but... You know, if this happens, if Daniel Bryan is truly back, the phrase of anything can happen in the WWE, you know, they don't use that line anymore, you know? Back when we were watching the Attitude Era, back when we were watching WWE growing up, You know, Vince McMahon would always have that promo guy come out, you know. Anything can happen in the WWE, right? They might not be saying that and uttering that statement anymore, but truly anything can happen in the WWE. If Daniel Bryan can come back, and if WWE cleared Daniel Bryan after resounding no, after no, after no, after no, and and casting so much doubt on the fans that this guy is never going to come back, you know, 
we were all looking forward to Daniel Bryan going to New Japan and Ring of Honor, you know? We were already booking him in All In. We were booking him at Final Battle. We were booking him at Wrestle Kingdom 13 against fucking Kota Ibushi or Kenny Omega or Kazuchika Okada. We were booking him in all these different situations. Everything but WWE. And I would have followed him everywhere. I, I would have followed Daniel Bryan anywhere he went to wrestle. If Daniel Bryan was going to wrestle in Ring of Honor, I would have watched Daniel Bryan wrestle in Ring of Honor. Every single time. If Daniel Bryan went to New Japan and won the IWGP Heavyweight Championship, I'd be watching New Japan on a regular basis. That's how important Daniel Bryan is to everybody. Everybody. But the fact that we are looking at Daniel Bryan in the WWE, I couldn't be more happier. This is where I want him to be. We're all WWE marks. This is where I truly wanted him to be always. If Daniel Bryan can come back and overcome all of this, you know, I, I don't want to... I don't want to jump the fucking gun here, but, you know, CM Punk, if he loses his next UFC match, which I hope he doesn't, because I want to see the guy fucking succeed. I want to see all his work pay off. I love CM Punk. I think Phil Brooks is a fucking inspiration to a lot of people. I really do. If CM Punk loses his next UFC fight in June, the door for CM Punk to come back, I think, opens just a little bit more. And... The main event of WrestleMania 30, without a doubt, should have been CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan should have never had to gone through Triple H and Batista and Randy Orton to achieve what he did. I'm not complaining because it made for one hell of a memorable moment and WWE righted a ship that was headed into fucking the middle of nowhere. Lost forever. So I got to give them some credit. But the original main event should have always been CM Punk Versus Daniel Bryan. If Daniel Bryan got cleared by WWE in the manner that he did today, you know, the, 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 the main event of WrestleMania 30 that we were not given, the WrestleMania 30 main event that we deserved in Punk versus Bryan still has some life. And I know I'm not the only one to think that. I know I'm not. And I truly hope that one day it does happen and we get another moment like this. There is no... Uh, we've literally seen everything in WWE. We've seen everything in WWE. The only other bigger thing that could ever happen to this company right now is CM Punk coming back and returning to the WWE. And I honestly think it will happen. I didn't think Daniel Bryan, because of how WWE stance on concussions were and, you know, with all the lawsuits they had going on, Anybody, you ask anybody, and they would have said, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't think Daniel Bryan's coming back. But whatever happened, whatever tests he had done were good enough for WWE. And you know their stance on it. Triple H mentioned it publicly. Triple H mentioned it publicly. Family first. WWE superstar second. They would never put Daniel Bryan in that situation to ever risk his life. You know, if this happened, anything can happen. So I'm holding out hope, man. I'm holding out hope that this is not the last of these special moments in WWE because tonight was absolutely a memorable moment, not only for SmackDown Live, but for WWE as a whole. I'm going to replay to you what WWE has on their YouTube channel. Daniel Bryan thanking the WWE Universe after being cleared to compete to return to in-ring action today via their website. They announced it via their website WWE has cleared Daniel Bryan to return once again to in-ring competition. A little over two years ago, uh, when I was forced to retire, it was one of the hardest days of my life. But I, I focused on one thing, on being grateful. And I kept on focusing on trying to be grateful. So there were... There were times when I was depressed about not being able to do what I love to do, and I focused on being grateful. And there were times that I was angry and I was mad that I couldn't do what I love to do, and I focused on being grateful. And, and I have a lot to be grateful for. I have amazing family, I have amazing friends, 
I have the best fans in the world. And I also have an amazing, beautiful wife. And when I was depressed, and when I was angry, and I was trying to be grateful, and she saw that all I wanted to do was get back in the ring, she came to me and she said, it's wonderful that you're, you're grateful, but you need to fight. And you need to fight for your dreams. And, and over the last two months, I've asked WWE to relook at my case. And they sent me to the best neurologist all over the country. And all of these neurologists, every specialist, every doctor I've seen has said the same thing, and it is this. You are cleared. So I've got a lot of thank yous to say right now. First of all, I want to say thank you to the WWE and their doctors. Because first and foremost, they looked at me as the person and not me as the wrestler. And for that, I will be forever grateful for them. I also am grateful that they were willing to give my case a second look, for me to be out here to be able to say to you guys that yes, I am cleared. I want to say thank, thank you to every single person here, to every single person watching at home, because you guys have supported me for this entire time. And lastly, but not leastly, I would like to say thank you to Bree. I, uh, I don't think any of you truly understand how much she supported me over the last two years. And for that, I am incredibly grateful. So, now, on to the fun stuff, right? I don't know exactly when or where I will get back in this ring. That's a great moment, man. Literally everybody in the crowd was pointing to the WrestleMania logo. Everybody. Does, does that sound like a good idea? I don't know for sure if that's gonna happen, but will Daniel Bryan compete in a WWE ring again? Unbelievable, man. Absolutely unbelievable. You, you, you guys don't know how important this is, not only for the WWE, but for concussion research too, man. The fact that he's been out for two years and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, and he broke through. You have no idea how important this is. If someone else in Daniel Bryan's situation comes along and they suffer the same ordeal that he went through. It gives everybody hope that it's not the end. It's not the end of your career. Everybody wrote off Daniel Bryan as if he is done forever. He is a modern day inspiration, a modern day influence, and a modern day hero. And I think Daniel Bryan is going to be a major factor moving forward. And I think I'm going to talk about this in a separate video. 
tomorrow, being that we're going to get fucking snowed in, another nor'easter here in, in New York. I, I might make another video. You guys called for an off-the-script extra. Might do that tomorrow. As always, I wanted to wait till an official statement from Daniel Bryan himself was released. I wanted to see what would happen on SmackDown Live tonight. We got our answer. We're headed there. I'm going to add to that on an off-the-script extra probably tomorrow. So look forward to that in your subscription boxes right here on YouTube. Unbelievable opening segment, memorable to say the least. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens obviously beat the shit out of Shane McMahon last week. They were not in the arena. They were on their way to the arena, and we all knew that we were going to get some sort of storyline towards the ending of this show. Rusev versus Shinsuke Nakamura, a rematch from WWE Fastlane. That was a great match at Fastlane. Probably the second best match of the night outside the main event. Rematch again tonight. Nakamura wins with a pin. No Kinshasa. He didn't get the Kinshasa on Rusev. Nakamura ducked a machka kick. Takes Rusev down into an arm bar. And Rusev countered it, but Nakamura countered the counter and pinned him for the win. After the match, Aiden English hit the ring. They started to double team. He and Rusev double team Nakamura. AJ Styles all the while was sitting at ringside for the match. And when Nakamura was getting his ass kicked by Rusev and Aiden English, AJ Styles, if you paid attention, started to take his jacket and the title off very slowly. Like, you know, he wanted to help Nakamura, but then he didn't want to help Nakamura. Handed the belt gingerly to Corey Graves, who he was sitting next to at commentary. Nakamura, by the time AJ Styles was ready to go help him, he had taken care of both Rusev and Aiden English. So AJ Styles stood there, ready to go help him. He's like, whoa, okay, you took care of it yourself. Nakamura gave AJ Styles a nice little smirk. So, you know, pretty much saying, listen, bro, I don't need you. I don't need you. I'm going to get you at WrestleMania, and it's going to be knee to face. So, um... You know, WWE, I was hoping that they would build some more of a foundation for Nakamura and AJ Styles going into their match at WrestleMania. It looks like they're just building it on, you know, Nakamura is going to be put in these situations where AJ is going to want to help him, but Nakamura is not going to need any help because he's going to get out of it on his own. And if you watch AJ Styles in the back, if you watch AJ Styles in the back, they had a nice little, you know, moment in the backstage area after the match. And Nakamura said he did not need AJ's help out there. And AJ says he knows. He's seen it. He was sitting right there. AJ interrupts Nakamura and says he already knows Nakamura is going to say something about beating him at WrestleMania. Nakamura then says AJ needs to have more confidence. But yes, he will beat AJ, said Nakamura, with a knee to face at WrestleMania. So it, it looks like AJ, it, just, just by the, the, the facial expression on AJ Styles, it looks like AJ is kind of getting intimidated that Nakamura is not afraid of who AJ Styles is. You know, I think Nakamura exuding all this confidence is, is kind of ruffling AJ Styles' feathers a little bit. I don't know if that is going to be the complete story here, but I wish they would do some more of uh, a nice little foundation, some groundwork between AJ Styles and Nakamura because they do have history. They did wrestle at Wrestle Kingdom 10 for the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. I wish that they would play into that aspect that, that this is not the first time that they've, that they've met or going to meet at WrestleMania. It was on Nakamura's home, home turf in Japan at the Tokyo Dome. Now we're at WrestleMania. We're on AJ Styles' home turf. You know, AJ needs to get him back. I wish they would play a little bit more into that, but, you know, Vince McMahon and his uh, WWE bubble, anything outside the WWE bubble doesn't exist to the old man. Ty Dillinger, the perfect fucking catering chef for Titus Catering. We finally see him. Got a new haircut. Looking good, Ty Dillinger. I heard a rumor that Ty Dillinger is going to be pushed on SmackDown Live after WrestleMania season. This, I have to see to believe. I don't know. Ty Dillinger versus Baron Corbin. This one didn't last four minutes. This one was pretty quick. Uh, Ty Dillinger, end of days, nailed him for the easy win. Baron Corbin got the win 
over Ty Dillinger. Both men will be in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. I love how there's no formal announcements from these guys. You know, I wish WWE would do more to build up the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. I don't want to hear from Byron Saxton that, well, Baron Corbin's looking to make a WrestleMania moment. He's looking to win the Andre the Giant Memorial for a second time. Why don't we have promo packages from the wrestlers themselves stating how important the Battle Royal is and just hyping up the Battle Royal in general? If you're going to hide it behind a commentator, it's not really that important. I want to hear it from the performer's mouth, not Byron Saxton. But what the fuck do I know, right? I operate out of my mother's basement, according to the trolls. Natalia versus Charlotte Flair... Normally, I would shit on a women's match on SmackDown Live. This was actually very good. This was actually a very, very good TV match. But Charlotte and Natty usually have good TV matches. They usually have had good matches in the past. And this is not the first. Um, But the one thing I I want you guys to understand here is no matter how good the match is, you have your SmackDown Live women's champion going into the biggest match of her career. You're going into WrestleMania in one of the biggest matches on the show. You should be booked to lose strong, uh, to look strong, right? You should not be booked to lose. So WWE here not only fucked up in that aspect, good job, Road Dog, by making your champion look real strong going up against the Empress of Tomorrow, who's undefeated, by the way. I don't think Road Dogg realizes that Asuka is undefeated. Charlotte needs to look every bit as good against Asuka. A loss on the road to WrestleMania? Whose idea was that? I don't understand that. But towards the end of this match, um, Natty was on the outside. And she went for, Charlotte did, the figure four. She tried to go for the figure eight. Natty kicked her, rolled out of the ring. Natty runs around the ring to create some separation between her and and Charlotte. Flair hits a big spear on the outside. Brings Natty to the floor. Flair brings it back in the ring. Applies the figure four for a second attempt. Natty fights it. Prevents the figure eight. But Flair slides underneath the rope with the hold still intact. And she does a figure four like Bret Hart used to do on the turn post. On the steel post. She does it on the ring apron as she's leaning her her back up against the LED board on the side of the ring. So, the hold is broken. Flair goes up top, being that Natty is is hurt from the effects of the figure four on the outside. Natty cuts her off, climbs up to the top rope, delivers a very, very good superplex. Both superstars are down. All of a sudden, Carmella comes out, and her music hits, And she wants to cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase, okay? You know, everybody is concerned about, well, J.D. Charlotte lost on the road to WrestleMania. That's shitty booking. Yes, I agree. But I'm going to go a step further here and bring something to your attention that maybe a lot of people overlooked. Carmella comes out wanting to cash in the briefcase. She wasted valuable time by standing... In the aisleway, motioning to the back for a referee to come out. So, I'm watching this and I'm I'm saying to myself, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you motioning for a referee when there's a referee in the ring already? Referee ain't down. He didn't get mixed up. There was no fuck finish in the match with Charlotte and Natty. The referee was there. You're motioning for a referee to come run down the aisle with you because you want to cash in your briefcase. Meanwhile, there's a completely fucking perfectly fine referee in the ring waiting to take your briefcase. So not only did they book Charlotte to lose going into the biggest match of her life, they made Carmella look like a fucking ditz. They made her look like, and this is my coined phrase, this is my term, a blithering idiot. I don't understand that at all. So the referee was so enamored and just distracted with Carmella wanting to cash in the briefcase. 
He didn't know what the hell to do. He had his back turned. Carmella almost cashed in. She turns around and eats a big boot from Flair. She rolls to the outside. Natty takes advantage of this and rolls up Flair from the outside. Uh, from uh, with the you know from the interference. She rolls up uh, Flair on the inside with a roll up. One, two, three. I don't, I don't get anything that happened. They, they ruined a very, very good TV match with fucking illogical garbage towards the end. And how many times are you going to have Carmella come out and try and cash in the briefcase? Seems like it's a weekly thing now. Either she cashes it in or she doesn't. You know, the more times you attempt a cash in, when the actual cash in happens, it's not going to have the same effect. I would not do it anymore. I wouldn't have done it tonight. I wouldn't do it anymore. If you want to have it happen, have it be a genuine surprise. I don't understand why that logic is so difficult for, for Road Dog and WWE Creative to grasp. Come on, man. Stop making people look stupid. And stop having your champions lose so close to WrestleMania. Natty didn't need a win here. Natty's in nothing important. I don't see Natty on the graphic going against Asuka at WrestleMania. It's Charlotte going against Asuka. Ridiculous. I would have never booked that ending. Never. Jimmy Uso versus Luke Harper, or Harper, because they got rid of the first name. Um, The Usos, uh, they, I mean, I always compliment them. They're, they're legit the best tag team in WWE. You guys know that. They may be the very best tag team in the world outside the Young Bucks. Honestly. Jimmy and Jay Uso on the microphone have become one of those one of those talents. Both of them. They have become part of the elite on the microphone, really. When, when the Usos speak, you, you, you drop everything you're doing to listen to these guys speak. They, they could sell me on a, on a fucking... 12-day-old fucking bologna sandwich on rye and make it fucking appetizing. That's how good these guys are. They are amazing. And the fact that they are who they are and they have not strayed away from their characters and the fans are actually respecting them, you know? I, w- I guess you can call them baby faces. They don't act like baby faces. But the fact that they are over with the fans based on their talent and their mic skill is a great thing to see. And I'm really looking forward to what they do at WrestleMania. They don't belong on the pre-show.